Now, before I forget, put on the armor of God. Tom Thurman, stand up. Walk around. Be proud of that. So, so you have the full armor of God on here, and so you're going to make sure you don't forget that. That's right. So, so let's talk for a few minutes about not forgetting. There's a, a story about a about a city fellow who uh, he was visiting relatives on the farm, and 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 uh, and the farmer gave a whistle, and his dog herded the cattle into the corral, and then latched the gate with her paw. Wow, that, that's some dog. What's her name? And the farmer he was kind of forgetful, so he thought a moment, and then he said, uh, "Now, what do you call that red flower?" That smells good and has thorns? A rose. That's it, said the farmer. So he turned to his wife. Hey, Rose, what do we call this dog? <laughs> <laughs> there are times when we are forgetful. Been there, done that. Except Tom Thurman, because see, he always takes that with it, where the armor of God. So he never forgets. <coughs> Did you ever get your car? I locked my keys in my car the other day. I'm not sure I had my keys. I got out of my car, went into the grocery store, digging around in my big old purse for my keys. Couldn't find them. Have a second set of keys. Do you think I had them with me? No. They were in a bag in the back seat. <laughs> so I called Triple A. But so have you ever reached for your keys and, and you couldn't find them? Or you couldn't even remember, you know, sometimes they ask me, for well, what's my email address? Why well, I have to go back and check in my directory. Now, is it .com or is it .net? It's .com. You know, we can all be forgetful. Do you remember your first car? Mine was a Nova. <laughs> now, in Espanol, that means no go. That car hated me. That car hated me, would not run for me. My dad would get in that car and said, well, Deli, I don't know what the problem is. It works fine for me. I said, well, then, Daddy, maybe you need to drive it because it's not working for me. Do you remember your first home? Your first job? Graduation from high school? We tend to remember special moments in our life. And for many of us, those are Kodak picture moments. Our memories are not simply for personal mementos. Our nation, our nation is a nation of memories. Throughout the country, there are monuments to mark special occasions and special events. If you've ever been to Washington, D.C., how many? Yeah. What are the monuments that you see there? Lincoln Memorial, Jefferson Memorial. Washington Monument, Iwo Jima Memorial, the Korean War Memorial, Vietnam Wall Memorial, all remind us of the contributions that men and women have made for us and to our country in perilous times. But, but monuments are not exclusive to Washington, D.C. We have national cemeteries and battlefields, such as Arlington and Gettysburg, which remind us of the high cost and the high price of freedom. Tomorrow is Memorial Day, a day set aside to remember the men and women who gave lives for their country. Memories are not just for heroes. Pat, you mentioned about being Decoration Day. Yes, I grew up, it was Decoration Day. And I can remember, I'm sure I've told you the story, you know, I was probably 10, 12. We would drive from Akron, Ohio to Fostoria, Ohio. It was like a three hour trip. And my mom would get the, the pots of geraniums. We'd put them in the car. It was a stick shift car. We had to go up Old Smith Hill. And my mom, she would be, you know, clutching and, and, and getting that car to go as fast and as much as she could up that hill there and make it to the other side. And we'd finally get to Fostoria, Ohio. And then we would go to all of the graves of the family. Who had served. And, and she told me it was decoration day. So 
So thank you for reminding me about that. It's important that we have days like Memorial Day, Decoration Day, to bring ourselves to remember those who are worthy of being remembered. But we have private memorials too, like scrapbooks, or diaries, or photo albums, or videos, or even websites. We have public memorials like bridges and highways and libraries and schools and other buildings. And all of these things are done so that we will be in remembrance of the importance of these past people and past events. Realizing our need to make and keep memories alive, marketers have tried to cash in our desire to remember. They offer a variety of products and special events in our lives. There is a local bank that allows its customers to have a picture or a drawing on your own check that makes it highly personal. Some 2,500 individuals have paid for these special checks to be created. One of our church family members has pictures of her children on her check. One of the most imaginative customers is the man who ordered a set of memory checks to be used for only paying the alimony checks to his ex-wife. <laughs> and, and the picture that's on his personal check that he only uses for his ex-wife for the alimony check is a picture of him passionately kissing his new wife. <laughs> it's Memorial Day weekend. To some, that means time in the park or family vacation or the end of the school year. And to fellow contemporary American traditions, we are probably all just a few hours away from being filled with burgers and hot dogs, chips, pickles, and macaroni salad. Yeah. We know what it's like to be filled with food. And if you have a kind and caring family, you know what it's like to be, like to be filled with love. A reporter was interviewing a senior citizen who had just turned 100. What are you most proud of, he asked him. Well, said the man, I don't have an enemy in the world. That is so beautiful, so inspirational, said the reporter. Yeah, said the 100-year-old man, I've outlived every one of them. <laughs> outlive our enemies. It would be nice to think that we live in a perfect world where we have no enemies, no dispute with our neighbors, no reason to have enemies. A holy man was meditating under a tree whose roots stretched out over the riverbank, and during his meditation he noticed that the river was rising and a scorpion was caught in the roots and was about to drown. So the holy man, he crawled out on the roots and reached down to, to free the scorpion. But every time he did so, the scorpion could stand. And an observer came along and said to the holy man, Don't you know, don't you know that that's a scorpion? And it's in his nature to want to sting? To which the holy man replied, That may well be, but it's in my nature to say. And must I change my nature because the scorpion does not change his? It's the nature of the scorpion to sting. The way of the world lies under its sway, setting a, a snare to trap and sting its prey. It's the nature of evil which opposes good. There's a saying, if you are not meeting the devil on the road, then you're probably going in the same direction. According to our text today, we are to resist evil and put on the full armor of God. How do we do that? By being humble, by disciplining ourselves, by keeping alert and remaining steadfast in our faith. The enemy is out there, but like a soldier prepared for battle, we are to remain alert and do all that we can to resist evil. Our lives are a constant struggle, and the struggle is up close and personal all the time. It is hand-to-hand -hand combat. It's inside our own head. It's brother against brother, daughter against mother, buyer against seller, store against store, city against city, hope against despair, appropriate against inappropriate, and good against evil. It's more than just us. Apostle Paul describes these struggles that we are in as struggles against principalities and powers, against world rulers, and against a whole spiritual host of wickedness. Most of us know that we are in battle with 
haven't spent a lot of time trying to figure out where the evil is or what to call it. So how can we survive? How can we be equipped to stand firm? Paul urges us to strengthen our faith and to trust in Jesus. We are to equip ourselves with the weapons and dress of God's strength. We don't go out on our own strength. We are to be strengthened by the strength and power of God. Paul reminds us that we are not fighting to conquer evil. Jesus Christ, risen Lord and Savior, has already defeated evil. Death has lost its sting. But we are seeking the strength of God to stand firm, to hold our place, to defend the ground that has already been given to us, to keep in our control a critical position on the battlefield. In the movie Star Wars, Obi-Wan Kenobi is in white, representing good, and he faces off with Darth Vader in black, representing bad. In The Wizard of Oz, the Wicked Witch of the West represents evil and chaos, while the Good Witch of the North stands for peace, harmony, and doing what is right. Today, Scripture is full of a spiritual battle. We are to be strong Christians. Good warriors are always aware of their strength. They know their abilities and where their strengths lie. We are no different. We find our strength in the Lord. We plug into God's strength through prayer, through scripture, through worship, and putting on the armor of God. In the Star Trek episode, they encounter the Borg, a computerized race that proclaims, Resistance is futile. In other words, give up. Not so. Resistance of the enemy is not futile. If it means that we face our enemy standing firm on our faith in Christ Jesus, the enemy is out there, but the enemy is not us. Turn to the person next to you and tell them you are not the enemy. Oh, with, with, with gusto, you are not the enemy. <laughs> and let me just preface by saying, and our leaders are not the enemy either, but you know, an Indiana farmer took his family to the nation's capital to see how the government worked, and after visiting the House of Representatives, then they went to the Senate, where the chaplain of the Senate was speaking. Daddy asked the farmer's ten-year-old daughter, does the chaplain pray for the Senate? No, said the farmer. He comes in, he looks at the leaders, and then he prays for the country. <laughs> If you don't stand for something, you'll fall for anything. If we don't stand together, we will fall apart. There's something that can be said about just doing nothing and standing. It's been said that many of God's people walk out of their house every morning naked, spiritually naked, that is, without the armor of God. You can't stand around without the whole armor. It's like standing around naked in a thunderstorm, expecting not to get cold. Remember when your mother or your grandmother would yell out to you, It's raining! Put on your boots and your raincoat before going outside. And we responded, Oh, I don't need them. It's just a little shower. I'll just take the umbrella. But later on, we were glad that we had listened and put it on. When I was... Growing up, we would gather in all the neighborhood kids and we'd play ball in the yard and in the street. Sometimes it was kickball, sometimes it was softball, sometimes we did hardball with baseball. When we played baseball, we had a, a metal constructor worker's hat that we used for a batting helmet. Now, my next door neighbor, Stevie, he was a couple years older than I, and he didn't think that he didn't need that. It's just going to get in the way. Somebody else yelled, well, put it on anyway. Good thing, because Stevie never saw the pitch that ended up hitting him in the head and dropping him to the ground. He was okay, but he was glad that he had put it on. The purpose of this passage is to let us know that there are certain things that we need to put on to be successful in battle. When God tells us to put on something, there's a reason for it. God sees that we are not adequately prepared for battle and to handle the situations that we are about to face. We have to be properly
properly dressed in God's armor. Paul knows that we're going to get knocked down. Sometimes we're going to lose. But the purpose of the armor is to stand. Because when we stand, we exhibit faith in God's grace. We don't have to win. We just have to stand. One of my favorite stories is about Bill, the truck driver. Twice a week, he hauled loads between El Paso and Houston. And he always stopped for lunch at Joe's Diner, a friendly little truck stop about halfway between the two cities. So one day, Bill parked his truck, walked into Joe's Diner, sat down on the stool at the counter, and he ordered lunch. And off in the distance, there was a loud roar, and there was a cloud of dust. And as the roar got closer, out of the dust came 12 bikers. They parked their motorcycles, and they stormed into the diner. And they all crowded around Bill, who was just sitting there quietly eating his lunch. One of them picked up Bill's glass iced tea and just poured it over his head. Two of them pushed Bill off of the stool. Bill never said a word. He got up, brushed himself off, paid for his lunch, and left. The leader of the gang swaggered over to Joe and said, That guy's not much of a man, is he? He didn't even try to defend himself. No, Joe replied as he looked out the window, and he's not much of a driver either because he just ran over 12 motorcycles. <laughs> like Bill, we are surrounded. And like Bill, we need to choose our reaction to our enemies wisely. However, unlike Bill, we are not alone. We are not defenseless. Being a Christian is not a learned skill. It's a relationship with our living Lord Jesus Christ. And like any relationship, if we want to keep it deep and meaningful, it takes time. It takes commitment. You wouldn't show up for a marathon wearing golf cleats, and you wouldn't show up for a baseball game in hockey gear, and you wouldn't show up to play basketball with a set of golf clubs. So why do we show up in life unprepared? Paul reminds us, put on the full armor of God. Be strong in the Lord and his mighty power. None of the pieces of equipment that follow are about us. They're all about the power of God. In Romans, Paul tells us to put on the armor of light. If we are wearing the armor of God, we shine. We reflect the power of God because Jesus is the light of the world. Paul seems pretty confident that what we're up against is very powerful. And it's more complicated than just our temperaments, or our issues, our addictions, our family dynamics, and everything else. Paul wants us to recognize that every day we are battling, we are competing, we are striving against things that we don't necessarily see. Martin Luther King Jr. said, Darkness cannot drive out darkness. Only light can do that. Hate cannot drive out hate. Only love can do that. If we understand, if we understand that the Word of God is really Jesus, the Word made flesh, that the only good offense is love, then we need to be like Christ. It is when we put on God's armor that we're able to stand firm, Encourage one another. Pray for one another. 